is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome to another episode of Cut the Foreplay. My name is Sunday Favorite. I'm your host for this and every other episode until the internet goes away. I've been watching a lot of musicals lately. Can you tell? So many things have happened since we last spoke. Uh, I don't even know where to start, but I thought it was paramount at this point that we address the Mercury in retrograde, aka Mercury in reggaeton, Mercury in Ribena, Mercury in whatever the internet calls it, because this shit to me is very real. I'm gonna tell you what it is, and then we're gonna jump into some fucked up shit that happened during the retrograde. And lastly, I'm gonna finish you off. <laughs> Nadia, come on, we just started the episode. I'm gonna finish you off with a text from my ex that I got unprovoked. Let's start this episode. What in the motherfucking hell is a fucking Mercury retrograde? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <coughs> that, that was like, I, I meant to just clear my throat, but I think I got some there. <coughs> Three or four times a year, the planet Mercury is said to go retrograde. That is to say, it moves in an opposite direction to planet Earth. Planets move from east to west around the sun. And when Mercury turns to move from west to east instead, that's when Mercury is in retrograde. But this backwards movement is an illusion, similar to the one you experience when you're in a car on the highway moving faster than a train alongside you. The train appears to be moving backwards, but it's just moving Moving slower than you are. The same thing happens when our planet passes Mercury in an orbit around the Sun. Mercury is just moving slower than the Earth, causing the illusion that it's moving in retrograde. But illusion or not, astrologers believe when it happens, Mercury retrograde has an effect on life here on Earth, specifically within the realm of communication and technology. In astrology, Mercury governs communication, travel, and learning. For this very reason, Mercury retrograde is blamed for everything from miscommunications to technology fucking up to botched business deals, missed flights, a mechanical issue with your car, or even a broken cell phone. Word to the universe, all these things have happened to me inside and outside Mercury retrograde. Outside of Mercury retrograde, it's because I'm a piece of shit. Within Mercury retrograde, it's the planets, dog. What in the motherfucking fuck happens during a fucking Mercury retrograde? A Chinese court has ordered a man to pay his former wife 845,460 shillingis, aka $7,700, as compensation for housework she did during their five-year marriage. Under a landmark civil code that seeks to better protect the rights of individuals, spouses can seek compensation from their partners in a divorce if they shouldered more responsibilities, including housework. The woman who did not work outside the home during the marriage sought compensation for housework she had done after her husband filed for divorce at a district court in Beijing last year. He's got to pay her 34,000 shillings a month to support their child, with other assets such as property to be divided equally. Now, the award of compensation for housework sparked debate on Chinese social media, with many people thinking, this is a plot twist, I didn't, I, I didn't see this coming, they thought the amount was too little. I love this fucking energy. Let me tell you, this situation could only unravel during a magical time such as Mercury retrograde because I feel like it generally everyone's like, oh, this could be something that could help a woman. <laughs> Never fucking mind. Let's put more money into making Viagra. Nobody asked for that, man. People, human beings like to avoid the actual problem. We're like, oh my God, all the resources are depleting at an exponential rate by 2080. We're not going to have any oxygen. And then all these billions are like, can we invest our money into creating a hotel? Wait for it, in space! And everyone's like, nobody fucking asked for that. They are actually making a hotel in space that can hold up to 400 people and there's gonna be concerts and all that jazz. We're gonna talk about it in another episode, but fucking wild. Everything that's happening right now is so wild. Year two of the pandemic, sister, you guessed it, is wild. People are complaining that a nanny's annual income is already in the tens of thousands and uh, what she is getting is too little. And I know some people would be like, but you were in the marriage, you were the child's mother, then why not? I'm doing that, you know, the jacking off gesture, like in Bridesmaids. Oh, Helen knows the owner. <laughs> 
Honestly, right up there with most quotable movie for me, right next to Mean Girls. I am ready to party with the best of friends. I gotta go down to the river. And what woman buys another woman a trip to Paris? Lesbian, am I right? We were thinking it. We were all thinking it. I did it. I'm shitting in the street. Shit, that is fresh. There's a colonial woman on the wing. She's churning butter. What kind of name is stove? Are you an appliance? No, I'm a human man. Ma'am, you can't sit here. This is first class. It's not me. It's uh, Mrs. Uh, Inglesias. <laughs> oh. Fuck. I love that movie. Where were we? Chinese lady. Chinese lady. Where were we? Where were we? Nadia, come on. Come on. You got it. Yes, I don't think that's sufficient either. If you don't believe me, I want you to take just X amount of hours of your life and watch the Betty Broderick case, season two, where it goes through a woman's life, this woman named Betty, with her husband, how she helps him create this entire lavish existence, and then eventually he starts fucking his secretary, I know, unimaginative, and then gaslights her so bad and steals everything from her, yet she is the one who got him through med school, through law school, wrote down his notes, took care of all bajillion children that they had together, and couldn't pursue a career because she kept having to help him with his. Now come present day, you decide you don't want to put your pee-pee in my hoo-ha anymore and that you have no love for me, so I have absolutely nothing to stand on. How am I supposed to raise said children? How am I supposed to eat? Motherfucker, 34,000 shillings a month? What am I going to do? Spend 6,000 of those shillings buying makuti and living in a home alone? Watch out, Shenzi. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. And I don't even make any fucking sense. Compensate spouses, men or women. If you helped a partner start up a business with your own kashilingis and your own time and your own mind, you deserve a part of it if you want it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. The next one is about fisting. Your mother. <laughs> oh, hey, sorry, sorry, dunia. Kya pan se leke Russia, Australia se leke America. Made in India, piara sonia. Yo, that song is still a fucking banger and we all know it. Speaking of India, let's talk about South Africa because they hate colored people. <laughs> So does the royal family, but we'll talk about that in the next episode, right after my fisting TED talk. A woman in South Africa avoided getting thrown out of a pick and pay supermarket by using something that I just, I don't even, I can't, my mouth, my face, my body, I cannot accept this information. <clears throat> Smartphone camera footage obtained by Newsflash caught the bizarre interaction in which the store guard asked the maskless woman who was waiting with her cart of groceries in the checkout line. He said, bruh, you gotta put on a face mask, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and she internally was like, aw oh, damn, I don't have one. So she reached under her skirt and pulled off her thong and wore it as a fucking mask. Chalas, stick a fork in me. I'm f fucking done with this world. I just... <laughs> that is such quick thinking that is so dumb at the same time. Why would you just wear a mask in the first place? Also, realistically, if you think about it, the parts that she'd have to put on her nose and mouth were definitely the parts that were straight contact with the vagina. We're talking discharge to mouth. And normally that's a fun Saturday night for me, but not at a supermarket. Baby, let me put your panties on your face. Got COVID, give me six meters of space. I tried. Yeah, I tried. You can't say I didn't. Meanwhile, police in Kushiro City announced the arrest of a woman suspected of puncturing 13 melons with her finger. <laughs> this is the dumbest story. How? Why? Why? However, rather than the simple greed that compelled a man to damage several Demon Slayer packages to get the toy that he wanted, her motives remain a mystery. When a 64-year-old suspect entered a supermarket and allegedly stabbed the baker dozen of melons with her finger approximately 1.30 in the afternoon. It's important to note that these aren't just ordinary melons, but the renowned Yubari King, which often make headlines for selling at exorbitant prices. The victimized melons had a combined worth of 14,000 yen, aka Kamashilingi. 
kama laki moja hivyo mimi naona laki moja na and some change i heard a tweet the other day where somebody said they hate the way people in the coast speak swahili i mean <laughs> i i totally get it Sometimes when I talk, I'm like, shut the fuck up, and I can't. I just like, eh, ongeza kidogo true yapa. Kwa samaki ni lepa moja na chapati yangu, naomba. Wacha ni ekei, ndani ya mkoba wangu. Hau si shondeyo mabuyu sana. Utanza kohoa kohoa. That's literally how my tailor speaks. Shonda. Shonda rhymes. Interestingly enough, no cameras caught her in the act, so it's unclear how the police managed to track down the culprit. The nature of their detective work and the suspect's motives have not been revealed, leaving it all open to wild speculation. We may not know why this woman poked holes in hardcore melons. We may not know how she managed to do it. But my takeaway is, I stand a woman with strong fingers. Call me. A meal delivery service was forced to apologize Sunday after a customer received what appeared to be a bottle of urine with their order. Now, this happened a couple of Sundays ago, so I know it was during this uh, Mercury retrograde. The unwanted ingredient, which apparently arrived in an empty plastic Coca-Cola bottle, was included in a HelloFresh meal kit delivered to an address in the UK. So HelloFresh is equivalent to our Jumias and our Uber Eats and our... So Oliver McManus, this guy's name is basically Man Anus, said, quote, on Twitter, Hey, HelloFresh UK, I'll keep it simple. Why have I received someone's bottled up piss as part of my order? <laughs> really, I can understand a couple of curlies maybe in your food. <laughs> couple of pubes. That is also a scene from a movie. Hold on, it's coming back to me. There were nights when the wind was so cold. Oh, she's all that with Rachel Lee Cook and Freddie Prince Jr. He would, uh, p puts the pubes on the pizza and makes the bully eat it. Ho ho, this story got me good. Niraj Gadder, who owns an Indian fast food restaurant, Chaiwala in Bath, or as British people call it, Bath. Just relax, please. So, Uncle Niraj decided he wanted to send a samosa and a wrap into space. Quote, I said as a joke once that I would send a samosa into space, and I thought during this bleak times, we could all use a reason to laugh. So he took the snacks, put them in a box, and then attached it to a weather balloon that had a GoPro camera and a GPS tracker. After multiple failed attempts, with the help of some friends, Uncle released the package tied to a helium balloon. The video captured the box traveling up over Bath skyline and into the sky. However, the GPS malfunctioned. Because the GPS thought, huh, out of all the things that I could do, out of all the reasons that I was created, and all the ways that I could be better utilized, I am tracking a samosa. And it was just like, fuck it, let me end myself. Naturally, the samosa barely survived the journey, and instead of getting to space, it landed in France. But this is also a great outcome, because somebody needs to introduce seasoning to their food. There was a couple driving in Yolo County, California. I can't, I can't believe it's called that. On Saturday, when they got into an argument, Argument. The guy was driving and the woman was in the passenger seat. That is important to note because they were clearly having an argument and she wanted him to shut the fuck up. And at one point she reached over, grabbed the wheel and steered them into a tree. I just, <laughs> oh, that is all levels of crazy. And it's kind of hot. People in relationships, thoughts and prayers, man. Thoughts and prayers. Y'all are really going through it. Why in the motherfucking Mercury retrograde am I getting motherfucking texts from my motherfucking exes? Whew. Let me tell you my theory and my understanding is that we are always moving forward. The only thing guaranteed in life is change. And twice or three times a year when Mercury moves backwards, it gives us the span of time where we get to revisit old things, see if they still serve us or if they don't. Kind of like when you Marie Kondo your closet. That's what this is, but emotionally. So during Mercury retrograde, people send texts, people reach out to their exes and it happened to me. I literally woke up in the morning 
I looked not feeling like P. Diddy, I'll tell you that. I woke up in the morning, looked over at my cell phone, my cellular device, and I saw a name pop up on my phone that I hadn't seen in over 10 years. An ex from high school texted me and said the following. Let me get the receipts. Quote, old time lover, I miss you. Or rather, I think I should say I've been thinking about you. End quote. This Mercury retrograde has this man malfunctioning. To quote a woman on Twitter, hold on because the retrograde's about to snatch your wig. If you are not traumatized enough and would like to re-listen to that episode or binge on the rest, all you gotta do is look up Cut the Foreplay or Capital FM wherever you choose to listen to your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or you could hire me and I could come and whisper it directly into your ear. See you next Wednesday at 10.30pm for another episode here on 98.4 Capital FM.